Hello, my name is Susie Fotheringham, and I am the Corporate Benefits Manager for Scientific Games. Today we are going to be going over the changes in plan enhancements for 2018. So you may be asking yourself, why am I here today? Well, whether at home or in your office, um, the items that we're going over are going to include not just the, what's changing in 2018 and what's being enhanced, but the reasons behind those changes and enhancements. Um, when you think of open enrollment, if you are looking at the news um, or even just Googling it, you will find many different articles that talk to and talk about the period of open enrollment and the opportunity to review your current elections and either making adjusted or um, sort of more educated um, decisions when planning for um, the benefits you elect for the upcoming year. It is very often for people to, to compare the time that they spend um, picking out a car um, that they're going to drive, um, the TV that hangs in their living room, and, and put that in comparison to the amount of time that they will spend selecting the right plan for themselves and their family. So when we talk about 2018, there were certain key objectives that Scientific Games wanted to check off as we determined what changes and, and what plans we would offer for this coming year. This is taken from the Senior Leadership Deck that we shared um, with the leadership team. Um, these are the areas that we wanted to um, address in 2018. First was contribution. We wanted to take a look and see um, how employees were paying into their benefits and also how Scientific Games was paying into their benefits. We wanted to see if there was an opportunity to enhance or realign um, the contributions that both employees and the employer were paying in 2017 into 2018. Perks. We wanted to see if there was an additional benefit, additional perks that we could offer um, and add to our benefit suite in 2018. Free coverage option. We wanted to um, look for opportunities to where we can offer employee-only coverage to employees earning under 50000 base salary, so that doesn't include overtime, it's strictly base salary. Um, we wanted to see if there was a way that we could offer employee-only coverage at no cost per paycheck. Protection. Insurance in general is protection. We wanted to take a look at the levels of protection we were offering employees and their families and look for opportunities to enhance or look for any gaps in protection that we could kind of close up and address. Demographic choice. Scientific Games employs four different generations. We wanted to see that if the enhancements and improvements and changes that we were making didn't just affect one particular age group or generation. We wanted to make sure that we didn't take a one-size-fits-all approach. And lastly, population health. Scientific Games has a very high diabetic population, a sick population. Now, diabetes in general isn't an expensive or, or unmanageable disease, but if we aren't adhering to treatment plans, medication, um, things more serious such as loss of limbs, kidney failure, renal failure, transplants, those are where um, the cost can be quite expensive for, for both the employee and the company. So when we look at areas like population health, we wanted to see if there was an opportunity for all employees to get a snapshot and understand and know what their numbers were. And that's where we rolled out biometric screening. Biometric screenings are free confidential health tests offered for all employees. If you're enrolled in the medical plan in 2018 and complete a biometric screening, you'll receive a discount on that medical premium for $23.08. Scientific Games does not receive individual biometric screening results or data. It is one against the law. There are federal privacy acts that are in place to protect employers from receiving individual information. So again, we only get notified whether or not you've completed the screening and can apply the discount. We do not receive individual information. Now, 
When we started our Know Your Numbers campaign with biometric screenings, we had a deadline of October 24. That deadline has been extended to November 24. If you complete your biometric screening, and you would do so by accessing the MySG Benefits website, password MySG, and when you click on the biometric screenings and log in and register, you'll be able to print out the form you see there on your screen. You take that form to your local LabCorp, and that's it. There's no cost to you. It's just for employees to complete. You receive your notification that you've completed it, and we apply the $23.08 discount. For those of you who have completed the biometric screening and seen your results, you may have noticed that the message we were saying was it would be intuitive and easy to look at and review with your doctor. That wasn't the case, so we made an improvement that started this past Monday, November 13th. We've enhanced the portal, and you'll now have a reference range that will be clear where you fall, red, yellow, green. So if you've already reviewed your results, please take the time to log back in and see the more enhanced experience. Now, $23.08, again, it's strictly just based on whether you've completed the wellness discount or completed the biometric screening by November 24th. It is a big difference, so please, if you haven't done it already and there's still time remaining, please get that done so you can have up to $600 in savings. Again, that's $23.08 per pay period. In addition to knowing your numbers, we wanted to gather everybody up and quickly review some of the additional tools that you'll need to refer to when you're picking and selecting the plans for your families. First and foremost, it does take a lot of research. So again, we go back to how much time you'll be allotting to spend in reviewing your information. And the first spot you would want to take a look at is the MySG Benefits website. This has current and future plan information located on the website for medical, dental, even our pet insurance. So again, mysgbenefits.com password mysg will take you to the MySG Benefits website. You don't have to access it when you're at work. It's available to spouses and children as well. It's an, an external website, so feel free to access that website, um, mysgbenefits.com. Now, in order to know how much or a ballpark of how much you'll pay in the upcoming year, um, it really would benefit you to take a look back and see where you're at year to date in 2017. On etnanavigator.com, you can actually look up your coverage and costs page. And this is a snapshot of mine. On the coverage and costs page, you will see where you're at with your deductible, where you're at with your out-of-pocket maximum. And then right there underneath that purple bar, there are three rectangles. That second rectangle that says, or the second gray rectangle that says estimate costs, that section um, is a cost estimator. What that means is, is that, as you may know, the cost of prescriptions, the cost of medical services, it's very similar to the cost of gasoline that we put in our car. It varies on the facility or gas station that we go to, and it varies on the time of year. It's a fluctuating and it's a variable number. If you fill your gas tank in January at a Chevron, it could very well cost a different amount per gallon if you were to fill your gas the weekend before Labor Day at a BP. So here under the cost estimator, you can enter in your zip code and the procedure or prescription. And within the radius, um, it will tell you the ballpark or the contracted amount for those services or prescriptions in the area. A prescription for the same drug at CVS can be different at Walgreens. So again, this cost estimator is an additional tool you can use in addition to reviewing your own claims to be able to find out how much a prescription or procedure costs that you may have in an upcoming year. There are questions that you should ask yourself when you're reviewing your um, history. One is you want to take a look at your claim and see if you take regular medication, how much does that regular medication cost? For your deductible, you, you would be asking yourself, is there um, a question as to where you're at? 
have you met it, or have you not met it, um, and exactly when you've met your deductible. Are you close to your out-of-pocket maximum? For many of us, we don't hit this number. And for some of us, we know that once we hit this number, the coverage is, is picked up at 100%. So it's very important to know where you lie to make sure that you pick the appropriate plan. In addition to that, if you have any planned surgeries or procedures in 2018, um, that's where that cost estimator would come in handy as well. But these are questions that you would want to ask yourself um, as you're reviewing your claims. Are you aware of you and your family's current health status? In a previous webinar also posted on the MySG Benefits website, we talked about optimizing our coverage mid-year in July. It's the same question that we ask here when we're reviewing options for 2018. For the Affordable Care Act, there are certain age-appropriate preventive screenings that you could take at 100%. No deductible, it's paid per the Affordable Care Act. We're talking about things like colonoscopy, mammograms, annual physical, annual blood work. If we're not taking these tests regularly, and as deemed by the preventive um, screening schedule, it's literally taking money from our pockets and leaving it on the table. So if you want more information about what age-appropriate tests are available to you, this information is found on etnanavigator.com. Again, you want to look at your family history and lastly ask if you're at risk for any serious illnesses. When you're considering the coverage levels that you you pick for 2018, you're going to want to know what your risk factors are, and your family history is one of those keys. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, and since this is recorded, I won't be able to hear your response, but if you could think of a ballpark number of how much a back MRI costs, um, and it, it's a key number that I ask because when we're thinking about things like big screen TVs, um, Pretty much, if you ask my husband, he'll be able to tell you the exact dollar range a 70-inch screen TV costs. If you were to ask him how much a back MRI costs, he'd probably say $10 billion. Now, some of us may be thinking a back MRI costs, I'm going to throw out a number that I've heard um, during on-site presentations, $5,000, $11,000, $2,000. So here is a copy of my claim, which is, um, for a back MRI done here in Las Vegas at Steinberg Diagnostic. If you look at the total bills amount, $1,095, that is what the cash equivalent, if I was a cash patient, if I didn't have coverage, and that's the amount that this facility bills Aetna. Aetna negotiates contracts with providers in network and facilities in network, and they come up with a fixed contracted amount for procedures. In this case, because I wasn't a, an Aetna member and used an in-network provider, I saved $670. So if you take the bills amount and you subtract the amount saved, that leaves the contracted amount of $425. If I had a back MRI and I had not met my deductible, I would pay the full contracted amount, in this case $425. It's important to know these numbers and become more familiar with them because when we're thinking about serious tests like a back MRI or any MRI, we tend to think larger numbers, $2,000, $3,000, $10,000. Now $425 is still a lot of money, but it's a lot less than $10,000. Let's talk about network. When we review plan network, we think PPO and HMO. In 2018, we're offering an accountable care organization. I'm going to talk more about what that means. Under an HMO, as some of you may know, um, in order to see a specialist, you have to have a referral, a piece of paper um, from your primary care doctor that allows you to see a orthopedic surgeon or a gastroenterologist, endocrinologist. Um, and that's what HMOs have. You need to have a referral through your primary care physician. Under a PPO, as well as the ACO of 2018, you do not need referrals to see specialists. The way that health maintenance organizations or HMO 
Um, the way that doctors are paid is on a per patient or per procedure basis. They're paid per head. Under accountable care organizations, the structure of payment is tied directly and is linked directly with the quality of care. Accountable care organizations pay based on overall improvement. Doctors are more aligned with the follow-up and follow-through of patient care rather than the number of patients that they see. This tied along to the message of partnering with your health. And so for us, this was an easy decision as we looked at clinical outcomes of ACOs throughout the nation and saw an immediate impact, not only in just the increase in quality of care, but the overall patient experience. We talk more about networks on a future slide, but we definitely wanted to address it here before going into the essential care plan. When we talk about the essential care plan, um, we talk about the two plans we're offering in 2018. A very common question is, is, we went from three plans to two. That sounds like a negative. And here's exactly what happened. When we presented our plans for 2018 to the senior leadership team, we offered two HSA plans and one copay plan, very similar to the three plans we offer in 2017. We talked about improving premiums across the board tied to biometric screening. We talked about a protective class of prescriptions that we would cover at 100%. We talked about autism coverage. We talked about infertility and transgender. We talked about a lot of different opportunities for us to, to inform and, and definitely improve upon the plans that we were offering in the past two years. Some things made the cut and some things were put on the table for the following year, uh, but we did get a lot of things um, approved we were super excited when we got that final approval. But about a week later, the senior leadership team came back to us and said, we see an opportunity to lower deductibles even more. We see an opportunity to lower premiums even more. So we were tasked with enriching the plan that we're about to go over even more than we already had. And by doing so, this plan is known as a high deductible HSA eligible plan. High deductible health plan in design has the word high deductible in it. By lowering the deductibles, the IRS sets a limitation as far as how low we can go. We got so close to the very minimum that the IRS sets for deductibles, there was no way that we could offer a second HSA plan. So we took the best of the value and premier HSA plans, and we enhanced upon that even more, and it's now the essential care plan. When we talk about the essential care plan, we first and foremost must address the benefits of a health savings account. Health savings accounts save you money three ways. One, the contributions that you make to your HSA reduce your taxable income. The contributions are made on a pre-tax basis. You can start, stop, increase, decrease your HSA contributions as often as you want or need to throughout the year you do not have to have a qualified life event. And reason number two is the interest earned on these accounts are tax-free. When we talk about the contributions that you make to an HSA plan, if they exceed $1,000, you can take that balance and put it towards an investment fund similar to the way that you invest in your 401k plan. These plans can function in dual role one being a retirement vehicle. The third way that you can save money on an HSA plan is that you use pre-tax money when you go to the doctor, fill a prescription, when you swipe that card. And that is a third way that you save taxes. Your HSA contribution and the match are 100% yours. There is more information on health savings accounts. I could talk about it all day, but we have a limited amount of time. But more information is found online on the MySG Benefits website. And when we talk about things like the HSA, um, and especially in today's news and current events, we know that health care is on the forefront. Trump care, you may have heard, there are different bills, Republican and Democratic. And I will say that while both bills are very different, one thing in common they do share. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, 
both versions of the bill are looking to double, if not triple, the IRS limit towards contribution. They're looking to double and triple the contributions employees can make to these types of plans. And that's because these plans work. There isn't a use it or use it. The money that you contribute and the money that you receive from the company for your contribution is 100% yours. If you don't utilize all of the funds by year's end, you do not lose the money. It rolls over year after year. I strongly encourage everyone to go out into the website and read the news, articles, Google it. There is lots of information out there on the benefits of investing and putting money into a health savings account. And this isn't new. We've reviewed over the past 12 years the number of Americans that are in high deductible health plans. Year after year, that number grows. In 2016, over 22 million Americans are enrolled in an HSA qualified high deductible health plan. Some of us may say that's for people without families. That's for people in their 20s or people near their retirement, um, people in their 30s. You hear all different kinds of versions. Of the 22 million that are enrolled in a HSA qualified high deductible health plan, the biggest chunk of the pie is 35%. So it's not a clear cut um, domination. 35% of people enrolled in this plan are between the ages of 45 and 64. Now, the, the reason why this is important is we think that the largest chunk are a group of people that are getting nearer to retirement, maybe checking their 401k balance and saying, hmm, how else can I sock money away for future medical expenses and retirement? But at just 5% less, 30% of people enrolled in the high deductible health plan are between the ages of 25 and 44. Now, there's no rhyme or reason, but there is no clear-cut winner. People of all ages are enrolled in high deductible health plans. But let's get into the premiums for the essential care plan for scientific gain. We wanted to be able to check one of the boxes that was our key objective, and we were. If your base salary is under $50,000 and you enroll in employee-only coverage on the essential care plan, with that wellness discount, you will not have a per pay period deduction. Now, it really doesn't matter what your salary band is or what plan you were on or what coverage level. There's savings throughout. If you were an employee that was on the premier HSA plan in 2017 and you were just covering yourself, you're paying $34 per pay period. With that wellness discount in 2018, you'll be paying $20 per pay period. That's less, that's 41% less than current year. If you are earning under $50,000 and you were covering a child and you were on the Premier HSA plan, that's $56.50 you were paying in 2017. We've reduced your premiums with the wellness discount by 66%, and you'll be paying $19 per pay period. Again, there's savings for all in 2018. Whether you're Legacy SG, Legacy WMS, Legacy Bally, um, you're, you'll be paying less than you were in 2015. We pulled out the guides from 2015 to see what you were paying into your benefits in that year. And this is just a snapshot of legacy scientific game. The premiums that you'll be paying with that wellness discount on this plan are less than you were paying in 2015. And that made a big impact. Additionally, we wanted to take a look at the items and benefits that we were offering that were being underutilized and see if we can make an adjustment to add to the overall savings of the plan. One of the benefits that we reviewed was out-of-network coverage. We wanted to see if by removing out-of-network coverage, if, if the impact would be great. And when we looked, a majority, and we're talking in the upper 90s percent, child, we were looking and seeing that not many people were going out of network. So when we reviewed the out-of-network benefits, we had to talk about three separate things. The first is emergency out-of-network coverage. Per the Affordable Care Act, 
In an emergency situation, all hospitals are considered in network. There's no such thing as out of network coverage when it comes to an emergency situation. So that's protected federally, so obviously we didn't touch that. The second out of network coverage option is involuntary out of network coverage. Say you were, you were seeing an in network provider and you were having a procedure or surgery done at a in network facility. If they use an out of network anesthesiologist, for example, or maybe an out of network assistant surgeon, um, that would be an example of involuntary out of network coverage. There is no difference in the way that we process involuntary out of network coverage in 2017 versus involuntary out of network coverage in 2018. The answer is still the same. You would contact Aetna and they would either reimburse you or the provider. So there's no change there. The only change in 2018 for out of network coverage involves voluntary out of network coverage. When you voluntarily seek a doctor, and they are out of network. A question. If you saw a commercial or somebody referred you to, say, a dermatologist, and you made an appointment with that doctor, went to the appointment, and then later found out that, oh, no, they were not in network, is that involuntary or voluntary? The answer is that's voluntary. If you're able to make an appointment, you're able to pick up the phone and call Aetna Concierge, or go online to verify if the doctor you're seeing or making an appointment with is in or out of network coverage. So again, just to reiterate, that's considered voluntary, and voluntary out of network coverage will not be covered in 2018. Let's talk about deductibles. On your screen here, you see the value and premier HSA plans of 2017 compared with the essential care plan of 2018. We've lowered the deductible. If you were on uh, the value HSA plan currently and you were just covering yourself, we've lowered deductibles by $1,000 in 2018. If you cover dependents on the value plan, we've lowered the family deductible by $2,000 in 2018. If you were on the premier plan, which is a richer, um, more costly plan, We've lowered the deductible for you by $250 for individuals and $500 if you're covering dependents. The essential care plan deductible for individuals is $1,500. The HSA limitation, or I'm sorry, the um, deductible on the HSA eligible plan, the essential care plan for you if you're going to enroll dependents is $3,000. We were super excited about that, but wanted to do more than just lower premiums and just lower the deductible. So we compared the plans side by side by side, and we asked ourselves the question, how much impact would it be if an employee can fill a preventive prescription, say their diabetic medication or supplies, their asthma medication, their high blood pressure or high cholesterol medication, their prenatal vitamins, what if they could walk to the pharmacy and fill these preventive prescriptions and not have to touch their wallet? What impact would that have? We thought it would be significant. So in 2018, we are covering preventive prescriptions at 100% before and after the deductible. You can walk, pick up these medications to your pharmacy or at your pharmacy, and you won't have to dig into your wallet. We wanted to do more than that. The IRS sets limitations as far as when you can set co-pays on this plan. And per the IRS, you can't have co-pays prior to the deductible being met. So we said, okay. We added co-pays for prescription coverage after the deductible is met. Let's talk about basics, um, benefit basics 101. Like your car insurance, your benefits has a deductible. That's how much you have to come out of pocket, and that's that contracted amount, not the cash patient amount, that you come out of pocket until you hit your deductible. Say you were just covering yourself on essential care. That's $1,500. Once you've met your deductible, services fall to a 30% coinsurance. That's essentially walking around with a 70% off coupon when you utilize services or see a doctor. If 
you've met your deductible, your prescriptions fall to a fixed dollar copay. We're super excited about that. Again, remember, preventive prescriptions are covered at 100% on this plan before and after the deductible. There is a preventive prescription uh, flyer that was available on on-site and also available online. So if you haven't reviewed it, you can see the brand and the generic forms and the medicine type that are covered at 100%. When we looked at MASH, one of the things that we wanted to address were things that we were doing great and things that weren't so smart. And the HSA MASH was something that really didn't incentivize employees to make their own contribution to health savings accounts. So in 2018, we made the adjustment, and no matter what coverage level you select, on the essential care plan, there's a dollar-for-dollar -dollar match up to $500 annually. Now, some of you may see this as a negative, and if you solely focus on, on the match and not look at anything else, I could see how you would see it that way. In 2017, if you started out on January 1st, enrolled in the Premier HSA plan, employee only, you received a $600 contribution to your health savings account from Scientific Gain. You left the company in a week. Remember, we don't touch your contributions or the contributions that we make. You essentially walk with that $600 from your account. When that money could be better allocated to the people that remain in the plan. So we got smarter and we wanted to incentivize people to make their own contributions. So again, in 2018, it's a dollar for dollar match up to $500. So $500 annualized over 26 pay periods is about $19.23 per pay period. If you contribute $19.23 per pay period, Scientific Games will also contribute $19.23 per pay period until we pay out $500 within the calendar year. Now remember, you can stop, start, increase, decrease your HSA contributions throughout the year. But if you look at the amount that you're saving per paycheck with that wellness discount, if you look at the significant decrease to deductibles and the added benefit of prescription, um, preventive prescriptions being covered at 100% and prescriptions falling to a copay after the deductible is met, if you do the math, we really didn't take anything away. We realigned and moved everything so this plan adds savings and is a plan that is universal to whatever your current health situation is. Let's go back to uh, doctors and claims. One common thing is, you know, I see a lot of specialists. I don't know if this plan is for me. Well, I see a specialist too, and so I put up a claim for when I saw my gastroenterologist. Again, if you look at the amount billed or that cash equivalent, $200. Because I saw an in-network specialist, there's the Aetna savings, that contracted negotiated rate. So if you take the $135.04 from the $200 that was billed, the contracted amount is $64.96. The copay on the Choice PPO plan and the Critical Care plan for specialists is $50. So yes, the amount that I'm paying is more than somebody on the Choice PPO or the Critical Care plan, but it's not four times more not two times more, it's $15 more. That's something to definitely review when you're reviewing your claims for the specialists that you see. Let's bring up that MRI again. Now, if I had it meant the deductible, this MRI that I would have would be $425. If I've met my individual deductible, um, let's just say I'm just covering myself, and I met that $1,500, then the cost of that MRI would fall to 30%, or $127.50. So when we move on and look at the second plan we're offering in 2018, that is called the Critical Care Plan. When we took a look at this plan, we realized something very quickly. Now, the benefits team isn't the only team that reviews our plans and utilization. We have um, benefits brokers, actuaries, and analysts that review information and benchmarks across all different industries, technology, gaming, manufacturing. 
And one thing rang true. The amount of coverage that this plan was offering was at a very, very low premium for employees. It was not priced correctly, and an adjustment needed to be made. And in addition to that, this plan is designed for people who have high-cost medication, specialty medication, that costs a lot of money. This plan is set with co-pays that shift the burden of the cost or shift the burden of the fluctuating cost to a fixed number or copay. A copay plan with a lower deductible to offset high medical care and prescription costs. That's what the critical plan is and who it's designed for. When we review all the plans side by side by side, and we look at the choice PPO plan and the critical care plan, we didn't touch the deductibles from 2017 to 2018. We made a moderate increase to that out-of-pocket maximum, that ceiling. The out-of-pocket maximum answers the question, if something catastrophic or critical were to happen to me or someone that I'm covering, what is the most out-of-pocket that I will pay within a calendar year? The answer is the out-of-pocket maximum. Now, for some of us, we may never get near that number. For the majority of people who, who need a plan, such as the critical care plan, they may hit that number in February, June, or may hit it you know, very early on. So again, those are the areas that we look at. And there, there was a moderate change to the out-of-pocket maximum, but we wanted to further enhance the plan. So we did add co-pays for lab and x-ray and major diagnostic. So that MRI that I spoke about, that's 425 on the premier HSA plan, it's 250 copay on the critical care plan. And we wanted to add that in because for a majority of people that, that need a comprehensive medical plan, it is an additional comfort to know exactly how much money you have to pay for the regular blood tests or screenings or uh, major diagnostic tests that you have on a regular basis that your doctor prescribes for you. In addition to that, we kept the co-pays low on this plan for 2018. And why we do that is, as I mentioned, the cost of prescriptions are similar to the fluctuating cost of gas for your car. Specialty medication in particular, they cover um, and this is just a snapshot of, of some of the prescriptions, but they cover and protect and improve the overall quality of life for employees and family members that are suffering from Crohn's disease, cancer, multiple sclerosis, just to name a few. And as some of you may know in the news, the cost of these drugs can change day to day. Um, there was an HIV medication that was relatively low cost and overnight, it increased to tens of thousands of dollars. For people who have a plan where it's a percentage, a percentage of a large amount of money is a large amount of money. So co-pays help shift that cost from your wallet to the companies, and that's why plans like this exist, and that's why we continue to offer this type of plan. Because specialty medication, it is well known and documented, no matter what time of year it is, if you're a benefits nerd like me, this class of drug, it rises and rises year after year. There is no end. So this plan in particular is designed to provide the comprehensive level of care for those who need it the most. We did not just make changes to the medical plan. For dental, if you have kids with braces, or if you need braces or your spouse needs braces, in 2018, you may have been familiar with the orthodontia, the lifetime maximum on orthodontia. Um, the most of the plan would pay out per member per lifetime is $2,000. Well, without changing the cost to the PPO network, the DMO already has um, the orthodontia covered, um, we've removed that lifetime cap, and now orthodontia and dental are pooled together in the 2000 annual maximum. So here, without changing the per pay period cost, you have $2,000 per year for annual, for dental and for orthodontia. 
we did big things in vision next year, and we're super excited about them. Um, in 2018, we looked at what you're looking at right now, which was the coverage we're offering in 2017. For those of you who don't wear glasses, you're likely on the base plan, um, which is free at all coverage levels. It just offers a minimal discount for an eye exam. But we wanted to see the opportunities to improve the bio plan. And we figured if you paid a little bit more but got a lot more coverage, you'd be more willing to do so. So we decreased the time frame for when you can get frames from every 24 months to every 12 months. We lowered the copay from $15 to $10. We've increased the allowance for contact lenses from $140 to $200. We've also increased the allowance for frames. It's $150 and now it's $200 in 2018. And we added a sun care benefit effective January 1st, 2018. We now have a $200 allowance towards non-prescription sunglasses. We thought that was super neat. And yes, it's just a little bit more. So if you're recovering just yourself, um, on, currently on the buy-it plan, you're paying $1.50. For all of that benefit, you're now going to pay $2.70 per pay period in 2018. That's $1.20 more per pay period over 26 pay periods. So again, the savings and the allowances clearly outweigh the small increment increase to your cost for eye care. What else did we do? We um, took a look and saw different areas of protection that we could improve upon. We started with long-term disability. Long-term disability answers the question, if you're unable to work for a period longer than six months, how can you put food on the table? How can you pay your bills? And we do offer currently a company paid long-term disability option. For executives, they receive 60% of their monthly base pay, 100% employer paid. It was free. So for non-executives, we had a 40% of your monthly base pay at 100% company paid, and the option to buy up 20% was available. We decided that there was an opportunity for us to improve it, so we put everybody on the same playing field in 2018. Now everyone, executives and non-executives, are at 50% base monthly pay for this benefit, and it's 100% company paid. You do have the option to buy up an additional 10%, totaling 60% of your monthly base pay. Um, but again, we've increased the non-executive company paid core long-term disability from 40% of your monthly base pay to 50%. We saw an opportunity for an additional protection to offer, and that's called hospital indemnity. Are you expecting, planning on expecting? If you have an upcoming procedure or, or surgery where you'll be hospitalized, knee surgery, comprehensive back surgery, whatever that is, and if you're confined to a hospital, this benefit is something you would want to take a look at. It's offered through VOIA. It offers a confinement benefit based on the plan you elect. And it also offers you a daily stipend for each day you're confined to the facility. Now, these are monthly costs, but just roughly, if you're an employee only and you take the low plan, it's about $6 and change per pay period. You may have heard about Teladoc. There's more information about this benefit on mysgbenefits.com. The additional um, benefit of Teladoc is something that we wanted to add. And if you don't know what Teladoc is, that's FaceTiming or video chatting with the doctor. We enhanced the benefit in 2018 and offer behavioral health and dermatology. Now, behavioral health, in addition to the employee assistance program, behavioral health addresses things like depression, anxiety, stress, grief. Um, this benefit, effective January 1st, will be available through Teladoc. In addition to dermatology, um, Caregiver, if you have, say, a non-family member or someone looking after you, like a niece or nephew, um, they can call on your behalf, and that's the caregiver service. The co-pays for Teladoc are the same for 2017 and 2018. It's $40 if you're on the essential care plan, and it's a $20 copay if you're on the critical care plan. When we talk about surcharges, the spousal surcharge applies to those who cover their spouse on their medical 
not their dental vision, just their medical. If you cover your spouse on your medical plan and he or she is eligible, doesn't have to be enrolled, but eligible through coverage through their employer, the $69.23 surcharge will apply. There's no change to the surcharge for spousal or tobacco and nicotine in 2017 going into 2018. The reason why we bring that up is because we're talking about what funds our workplace wellness program. And we're offering two in 2018. The first is OMADA, which targets our at-risk groups. At-risk for obesity-related diseases such as diabetes, such as heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, a combination of different factors that we'll talk about in a second. And then Livongo. Livongo is a benefit that we are offering to our diabetic population. Now, both of these programs are not just for employees. They're open to the dependents that they cover on their medical plan. That includes spouses and children. The first is OMADA. When we talk about OMADA, um, this program is targeted for the people that are right on the cusp, right on the edge of, of having a chronic condition or illness. And it empowers them with having a personalized health coach. Now, I've done the demo for this program, and it's not just a simple, do you like this type of personality or this type of personality. There really is a true commitment in a person that you partner with when it comes to things like health and weight loss. It is a comprehensive questionnaire. I compare it to eHarmony for health coaches. Participation in this program, um, you'll get a free Wi-Fi enabled scale mailed to your home and customized and personalized lessons and programs surrounding four key areas, food, activity, sleep, and stress. Throughout the program, you'll find out the areas where you're making great progress and the areas that you need to focus on. You'll have one-on-one -on -one interactive um, uh, interaction with your health coach and recorded lessons and articles to review. Livongo and diabetes. Uh, Livongo stands for Live on the Go. We wanted to continue the partnership and help with our diabetic population, and we felt that if you had immediate um, access to someone who can help you with a high or low reading, that you would um, receive a great impact from that benefit. So those eligible for the Livongo program will receive a state-of-the-art glucose meter, an unlimited test strip. When you receive that, um, you can actually set up an emergency contact. So if you have a high or low reading, it will immediately either text or email the person that you choose to inform them of, of what you just found out. You have 24-7 support with certified diabetes response specialists. And again, um, my mother's diabetic, and one of her biggest complaints is that when she would have a high reading, she would either contact her endocrinologist, and she'd have to leave a message, possibly getting that message returned later on in the afternoon, perhaps not even until the next day. She wouldn't be able to get an appointment for several weeks. So we figure if you're able to have access to somebody within minutes, that that would increase your overall experience. And, and Livongo is designed to do that, among other things. If that level of care is too much, there's also anonymous and private community peer support. Um, it's a great program. Um, we've seen a lot of success stories with other clients that they have, and we were super excited and are continuing to review um, our initiatives year after year to bring additional programs and wellness in initiatives year after year. So when we take a look at what's changing and what's improving, we're going to do a very quick recap. All the things that we went over for the essential care plan, um, we know that it's a hybrid of the value and premier HSA plans. There's a low deductible, and it's lower than the current deductibles for the value and premier plan. It's 1,500 for individuals and 3,000 if you have dependents. Once the deductible is met, prescriptions go to co-pays. Doctor's visits are 30% co-insurance. Employees earning less than 50,000, they will have no payroll deduction for their medical plan at the employee-only level under the essential care plan. 
preventive prescription, so that's diabetic supplies, asthma medication, et cetera. This is 100% paid on the essential care plan. Premiums for the essential care plan are lower than the current rates for value in Premier HSA across the board. There is a dollar for dollar match on HSA contributions, up to $500 annually. Employees who complete a biometric screening, and it says here October 27th, but as we know, that's been extended through November 24th, they will receive up to $600, and that's $23.08 per pay period on their medical premiums in 2018. New hires also have to complete the screening in order to receive the discount. Moving on to voluntary benefits, critical illness and accident coverage is moved from MetLife to VOIA. No real impact there. We've added hospital indemnity insurance through VOIA. So for those of you having future surgeries or expecting, um, that's definitely something you'll want to review. We've increased the core long-term disability benefit. That's 100% company paid. It moved from 40% of your monthly base pay to 50% monthly base pay for all employees with a 10% buy-up option. We now have behavioral health and dermatology offered through Teladoc. There is no longer a lifetime maximum on orthodontia. The 2000 annual maximum um, it, for dental is now pooled with orthodontia. We've made significant improvements to our vision plan, including that sun care benefit. The information that we've just gone over is available online, again, at www.mysgbenefits.com. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, we do have live webinars on Monday and Tuesday, and that information is also found on the Benefits website under Plan Highlights Webinars. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Benefits team, and that's benefits, with an S at the end, at scientificgames.com. Have a great day and a great year. Happy Thanksgiving.